Hi there, this is Chris from Bronze Motorsports once again. Here you see a 1955 Chevy 210 coming in for some major service upgrades and some service work. It's been sitting a while, so we're going to refurbish it and make it run well. Right now we're doing the brakes on the front. They're disc brakes. We had a disc brake conversion a while back. We're going to refresh the brake rotors, put in fresh pads. So here Roy is doing some front disc brakes. We're doing some fresh calipers and we're gonna put on some metallic disc pads. We're obviously checking the rear brakes and making sure they're good. And later on in the video, you're gonna see a master cylinder brake booster upgrade and I'll explain why we did that. Here is a Tanks Inc. Uh, fuel tank. We are going to do a sniper fuel injection. So here you see one of the techs, Lewis, he's checking the ohms reading on the fuel tank because we're gonna upgrade with some Dakota digital gauges. So we wanna make sure that the uh, sending unit readings are gonna match the uh, fuel gauge that we ordered. So it's all about checking with an ohmmeter. And right here you see an in-tank fuel pump going in. And here's Lewis doing his thing with the electrical. Lewis is connecting the fuel pump and the gas tank sending unit with a common harness. He's gonna heat shrink it, and then we'll put a uh, Deutsch connector at the end of the harness so that when you service the gas tank and you have to drop it out later on for any reason, you'll be able to do a quick disconnect, uncouple without cutting the wires. And here you see Roy bolting in the tank with the final straps and finishing touches on installation of the fuel tank. Now we're looking at a Matson radiator, full setup, the radiator core support. We're checking it for fit. We're checking the fit on these things because a lot of times the fenders are farther apart than they should be. So we want to make sure that we before we install it, we don't have to shim it. And right now we're putting some primer on it and then we're going to paint it black. All right, this is a Matson dual fan radiator. It's a two core aluminum radiator. We use these because they offer excellent heating control, cooling system control. They can be controlled by the computer to turn the fans on with the AC, without the AC. It eliminates a lot of overheating problems and running temperature problems. Now we're doing a coolant overflow tank and some custom radiator tubes. We bend these in-house and then we polish them. They're made out of stainless steel. Right now you see Roy pulling off the uh, Holly four barrel. We're gonna put on a Holly sniper fuel injection. It's a good system. Uh, they're great for cold start. When the motor sits, then the fuel drains out of a Holly four barrel. These things with fuel injection, you turn the key on and they fire right up. So it's a very popular conversion. You see Roy here fitting the low car linkage on it. It's for the passing gear and the custom gas pedal what we're gonna put on. Ready to go. Right now you're looking at the front of the motor and we're gonna be putting on the alternator and the high performance Edelbrock water pump. One of the reasons that we use these water pumps by Edelbrock, they have extra impellers in there and they increase the water flow going through the block. They don't overspeed it, but they pick up the speed. Once you put a heavy duty Matson radiator in there, it uh, enhances the flow characteristics coming out of the engine and it aids in the cooling of the engine. So we like these things to run at about 180, 200 degrees, and we're able to precisely control that with these kinds of water pumps and the Matson dual fan radiators. 
Here we're bolting on a high performance 140 amp alternator. We're gonna need that kind of efficiency out of an alternator to run the fuel injection, the cooling fans, and the uh, Dakota Digital Dash. One of the things that we have to look at when we put on these pulley setups is a belt alignment. A lot of times these kits come in and they don't exactly line up, so we look for pulley alignment. If it's not aligned correctly, the belts will squeal, they'll wear out prematurely. So we always do a test fit on all this stuff. And you'll see Roy and I looking at this thing and we've got a little alignment problem, so we're gonna do some shimming on the back of the power steering pump and the water pump to get these things in alignment. These things should not squeal or make any kind of noise going down the road. So everything's in perfect alignment. Now you see a brake booster and a dual reservoir master cylinder. When this 210 came in, it had poor braking stopping performance. So we took out a seven inch brake booster and we put in a Ford nine inch dual diaphragm brake booster and a uh, dual reservoir Corvette master cylinder. If you have enough vacuum in the motor, these things will do the trick. Now Roy is fitting in a brake proportioning valve and we're doing all new brake lines, making sure everything is plumbed correctly with a brake proportioning valve. We're gonna do some cosmetic work here. We're putting on some PML sand casted valve covers. These things have excellent baffling. They're rigid, they hold the gaskets in place. Uh, these are center bolt valve covers. So these valve covers are going on a ZZ4 motor. It's an older motor, but a, a great motor from GM. So we've got the valve covers on and they are plumbed for a PCV valve and a breather. Here you see Roy is putting in a MSD plug and play three wire distributor. It contains the ignition module uh, inside the distributor. So all it needs is a good coil and a three wire hookup and she's ready to go. All right, see here Roy is starting the stainless steel fuel lines. We run a pressure line front and then return line to the rear. Both of them are three eighths. This is not a high performance engine. It needs a lot of horsepower. So the fuel lines at three eighths are fine. You see he is reaming the stainless steel line to take the burrs out of the inside. Now we're burnishing the line to take the rough edges off of it. Now it's ready for a flare. So he uses this hydraulic flaring tool that's designed for AN flares and it's got a stop in it and it sets the flare perfectly like there. And now he'll put a uh, sleeve on it and a B-nut and he's gonna start running the fuel lines down the frame of the car from the fuel tank through a fuel filter up to the fuel injection and then back to the uh, gas tank. Here's a flex line that we put on one end of the fuel filter so that we can undo it and take the fuel filter out for easy access so we can clean the screen on occasion. So they, they don't want to be deadheaded. Here is Roy making a little bracket for the fuel lines. He's going to have a junction point up at the front part of the frame. So we're going to bring the two fuel lines to a meeting point at the front of the frame and then from there we're going to run some flex lines up to the fuel injection so we can make all kinds of brackets and little things at our shop. So there's the junction. He'll run some stainless steel bulkhead through connectors to that as you can see there and then we'll connect the flex lines that go to the front of the engine up to the fuel injection. So here's a completed fuel line system. All the lines, all the unions, all the stainless bent nicely curves around back to the fuel tank. Now we're getting into the ignition coil and the relay for the fuel pump and we're going to hide it underneath the battery tray. We try not to let all this wiring show and make it neat and trim so that it doesn't look like wiring is all over the place. All part of making these hot rods look clean and professional. Here James is fitting in a uh, Flaming River tilt steering column. Uh, the stock column that we took out didn't have tilt, and this gives it a nice touch with tilt for easy access in and out of the car. Here he's putting in the Prindle unit. And here you can see Lewis is installing the new Dakota Digital. It's called a direct fit dash. So he's got it wired up and we're checking it for function right now. So he's got the key on, he's plugging in 
some of the connectors and he'll slip it in there and we'll do some programming. All right, for a few final touches, we're programming the dash with the correct colors or the colors that the customer chooses for his dash and doing some calibration on the fuel and a few of the other gauges and then we're going to be going on a test drive. So the road test was great, everything runs good, it shifts well, all the gauges are working, it's ready for delivery. So we'll see you at the next car show or the next video.